wreck was indeed part of Colossus. However, it was not pottery which was to prove Todd's theory. The carriage gun was the main armament of the Royal Navy and spent many years in development. Its iterations and improvements made the Navy the most powerful of forces of the time. Guns came in varying sizes depending upon the application and type. Seen here is a sea service carriage gun of the type Colossus would have carried on her gun decks. The elevation of the gun could be adjusted by sliding a wedge-shaped piece of wood called a coin in and out under the gun. This was done upon the gun bed, a large section of wood situated above the rear wheel axle. It was the discovery of a single gun bed which proved to Todd the site was part of the Colossus. Yeah, well I was hunting the site for some of the Greek pottery, because that would have pretty much confirmed it as being that wreck. But it wasn't Greek pottery I found. In fact, I was struggling in that regard. And um, I decided I'd make a little excavation on the site to see if I could find any that way. Anyway, I went to a piece of the part of the wreck, started waffing away the sand, and straight away get to timber. I started going down the side of timber, found a nice coin, and then I went down past this timber and underneath it. And then beneath there, I started pulling out pairs of shoes and bottles and all kinds of things, you know, of interest. Anyway, I had a good day. I went home and I thought, that night I thought, oh, well, um, I'll go back there again and give it another try, see what else is down there. Anyway, I got there the next day and I noticed that the sand had all caved in and a piece of timber that I'd been digging around had moved and had slumped down with the sand, which told me that it wasn't part of the overall structure. So I thought, well, what is it? So I started to uncover it and, and this shape came out at me and I just thought, well, this is interesting quite an intriguing shape. You know, what is it? I could probably do something with this, get it conserved, you know, get it displayed or something. Anyway, I excavated it out. I lifted it to the surface. It was quite heavy. And I managed to get it on board the boat. It was all on my own. And I got it on board the boat. And I, I noticed when I got on board, my hands were covered in, like, black detritus, which had come off of this thing. So I thought, well, I'd clean it. So I started getting seawater and just rubbing it with seawater, cleaning all this stuff off. And as I did so, I got to one end, and as I did it, these letters started to appear in the end of the piece. And it just popped out like that. C-O-L-O-S-S-U-S, -S -S, like that. And I thought, well, blow me, after all this time, and that happens, just like that. This shirt of pottery is from the wreck and along with other pieces like it, it has been positively identified as Sir William Hamilton's Greekware. Colossus is the only wreck in British waters known to be carrying this type of pottery. From pieces like this one, it is a relatively easy task to look up its original shape and pattern. Then using modern, recreative techniques, we've been able to reconstruct what this fragment may have come from. In its day, it would have been an impressive specimen. At last, the pottery sherds combined with the gun bed provided the conclusive proof Todd needed that the new wreck site was indeed part of the Colossus. Todd had worked hard to solve the mysteries of the new site during which he had also uncovered much new material and found many artefacts to preserve and put on display in the local museum. This pistol found earlier on in Todd's involvement in the site is going through a conservation process for waterlogged wood. Over time the wood has become saturated with salts or chlorides from the seawater and the cellulose present in all natural things has broken down and dissolved. This leaves little structure left, so items spend many hours in fresh water to remove the salts, followed by long periods in polyethylene glycol or PEG. 
The PEG solution replaces the cellulose that has long since gone and without this replacement the wood would simply shrink, crack and slowly deteriorate. This work had progressed for over two years until on the 2nd of June 2001, Carmen dived the site for the first time and made the most astounding find of all. It was a discovery that sent ripples through the maritime archaeological world and gave new acclaim to the wreck. Basically we sort of wafted some of the sand away and it got bigger and bigger and bigger. <laughs> And I couldn't work out what it was at all, and all, all it was in my head, because obviously there's no conversation going on between mm. Todd and I, I kept thinking, well, you know, it's some sort of carved bit of the ship, it must be on the mast, really stupidly, you know, mm. being uh, me, I think it must be something, some decoration that sat on the mast or something like that, and uh, later to find out it was nothing like that at all. And it was actually the... The first part we uncovered was the laurel um, being held in the hand, and... Um, I couldn't work out what that was. I mean, you could, and, and part of the arm was there as well. But I was sort of looking at it very strangely, thinking, "What on earth is this?" And Todd decided he couldn't work it out, so he decided to orientate himself above the carving and turn himself around, uh, mm. you know, sort of 180 degrees, and have a look at it in different ways. And as he did that, it then came out at him what it was. And he was there. He was trying to tell me what it was, and he was trying to shout at me through his demand <laughs> valve, which was really funny. <laughs> And uh, and the you know he he then sort of was saying to me it's a hand it's a hand you know love round thing and then it you know I then he I still was going what what do you mean and uh, he he basically got hold of me put me in the position he was in where he could see it and sort of held me there and I was looking at him and he was going hand oh laurel and I thought oh I now know what this is still not realizing really where it part what part of the ship it had come from. Uh, and then, so basically then, you know, um, after we'd sort of uncovered, we uncovered quite a bit and we took it, um, the sand down to the sort of waist really, as it came down in sort of fish scale armour and it was just getting really big. And of course we were by the end of the dive at this time and Todd was literally out of air, whereas I'd been a bit calmer and we had some air. So we surfaced and uh, on the boat he just said I can't believe what you found and I sort of said I don't know what did I find <laughs> thinking well he's happy so I suppose I'm happy really aren't I and he went on to say that it was um, a, stone, a stone carving um, of you know and it was obviously part of the stone part of Colossus which again didn't mean a huge amount to me but it still meant something and it wasn't until he, he came home and sort of drew out really what I'd seen that I was so impressed and I was so pleased with myself I've got lots of brownie points <laughs> the carving was a stunning find and the only example of an original intact 18th century stern carving from a British warship still in existence the pair then decided to report the discovery a move that potentially could lose them access to the site Indeed, within days, archaeologists and salvers flocked to Scilly to investigate the find, but this brought new light to the project. What else could be down there buried under the sand? Unfortunately, all this new interest in the wreck forced the divers off the site. It was then protected by the government as historic remains of national interest, and without a licence, Todd was prevented from diving the site further. Todd wondered if it was ever worth reporting such things again. Back on the wreck site, government contracted archaeologists decided to raise the carving for preservation. This was funded by the Salva as discussions went ahead as to where the carving would eventually be displayed. A year later, archaeologists documented the raising of the carving and the Time Team documentary looked into the operation as it progressed. A monumental day in maritime history and archaeology, but a sad day for Todd and Carmen, who had been sidelined and their efforts ignored. Four years of trying passed before Todd and Carmen's efforts and involvement with the finds were finally recognised. A survey licence followed shortly, enabling him to carry on the work he had started six years before. 
Over the following years, this allowed Todd to map the whole wreck for the first time. It also brought a clearer understanding as to what had happened to the wreck after it broke up on the reef. Colossus had drifted onto the Southern Well Reef with such force that her rudder was smashed clean off the stern, sinking just off the reef itself. With no steering, she was at the mercy of the elements and blown across the rocks, she was stranded as the tide dropped. Rolling onto her port side, across the rock, her back broke, the bow sinking close to the reef itself. The stern, a larger lump, was carried on by the tide. Lying on her port side on the seabed, the action of the waves and the weight of her guns slowly embedded her into the seabed, the sand covering her as she lay to rest. Her starboard side has long since deteriorated, but her port side from keel to quarterdecks now sits in the sand. On our left what is thought to be the remains of the captain's toilet or seat of ease. On our right, one of her rudder gudgeons lies in the sand, together with sheaves or pulleys. Five of her guns stand proud in their gun ports. The port covers could still be hinged open. The line of guns marks what would have been her upper deck, and the remains of her lower deck and quarter deck ports can still be seen. A lone gun lies buried opposite a field of nails, once the glue which held her through her battles. Her remains now stretch what was once her stern and the captain's cabin to the midships and still contain many of her possessions. The site is a fantastic find and one of great interest. Using the same computer techniques used earlier, we're now able to show you what she may have looked like prior to leaving port. Some valuable lessons were learnt on Colossus, but many artefacts can be viewed in the Isles of Scilly Museum, a testament to Todd's efforts. The wreck site is still protected, but with permission it can be dived on a look but don't touch basis. <laughs> the carving's preservation was funded by the Tresco estate and now complete will see it displayed in the Abbey Gardens Valhalla collection. Now risen from its watery grave, the crisp light of day shows the carving's immense detail in all its glory. The Elmwood's grain runs along the arms like veins. The details such as the eyes, fingernails and armour bring the statue to life. Touching this great piece can almost transport you to when this once proudly stood watch from Murray's great cabin. It is a stunning find and a treasured piece of history, but the problem is how to preserve her and educate others through her remains. Over the past 10 years, many items have been lost, stolen, corroded away, smashed by the waves and eroded by the sand. Although work has been done to try to stabilise the site, it is feared that there will be little left in years to come. There is little hope that these problems will be solved with preservation and salvage costs expensive, and the sea an uncontrollable source of damage. Should the wreck be hidden under sandbags and muslin, to be only seen by archaeologists and privileged divers? Or should it be salvaged by supervised amateurs and displayed for the benefit of all? A choice we may never see made. <laughs>